Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding. Today I am unboxing two products from Birdkiss that they sent us to try out. Uh, one of them is actually a Smart Bird House, which we've had a lot of fun with so far uh, with other Smart Bird Houses we've tried and we're gonna see how this one stacks up. And then also a Smart Hummingbird Feeder, which also is a pretty cool product if you wanna see those fast moving hummingbirds in your yard. So I'm gonna get started unboxing this and uh, we'll see what it looks like. So the, uh, the Smart Bird houses. I always want to say smart bird feeder because I'm so used to that. Uh, there's a couple different varieties that we've tried out. Looks like this one comes in three different colors. Looks like we have the one with the black roof but also comes in green and blue. So let's get this bad boy out of the packaging and see what we have here. So I'm excited about this. We've had success getting wrens to nest in different boxes before. We've gotten some cool videos of the wrens. I would like to try to get some other kind of bird. Looks like you pull it from here. Wow, look at this thing. Well, that's a unique looking design, if you ask me. It's supposed to basically be like this when it's up. Which this is definitely an interesting design. I haven't seen one quite like this yet. It looks like it has a panel on the top to let light in, which I'm assuming is for the camera to get a view of it. Um, we'll see what else it comes with. A lot of these come with different types of holes, different sizes, so you can try to avoid house sparrows if you want, or let bigger, smaller birds in. It seems like it's well built. It's pretty hefty, so it seems like it's sturdy. So here's some of the latches. It looks like you should easily be able to open the top. Wow, there's kind of a lot going on in here. You're gonna open the side. So this is where we have all the stuff that we need to get out and set up. So that's how much space is in there if you're curious. So that should be plenty of space for almost anything. I'm assuming it kind of is going to sit like this, so this is going to be sort of like a base to it. I opened the rest of the boxes that contained a grate for the bottom of the birdhouse, mounting gear, different sizes of holes, the camera, and a solar panel. Next, it was time to unbox the Smart Hummingbird Feeder. It's funny because this one's significantly lighter than the Smart Bird House, so uh, you see it's got a variety of different hummingbirds and one kingfisher on the back it looks like. So I don't think that we're going to see that kingfisher at our, our bird feeder, but I do actually like the packaging of these two. It's pretty nice. It reminds me a little bit of Christmas time. It looks like we got the one that is red, but it looks like it also comes in orange and blue. I see there's no turning back. I've, I've destroyed this packaging already. We're just trying to pop it open. All right, there we go. So some of the things I'm going to be looking for when I test this smart hummingbird feeder is going to be the amount of notifications we get due to swaying. So since hummingbird feeders are usually hung from something, a lot of times the camera detects that motion of the actual feeder itself swaying in the wind. So we'll see if we can attach this in a way where we don't get all these extra notifications for just wind. And then also some of them leak from the bottom. So we're gonna be making sure that this does not leak and hopefully it's a good quality product that won't. It looks pretty straightforward. It looks like you have this as the base with the camera in already. And then that pretty much just attaches onto here, screws in. Yeah, I mean, that was pretty straightforward of a process to get that to screw in there. So I don't know if that's gonna leak or not. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. It's plastic, so that's something to keep an eye out for. Um, but you see the little flower nozzles here. That looks pretty cool. Comes with a cleaning brush. It's really important to keep your hummingbird feeder clean. And we have little um, attachment pieces as well to get this thing mounted mini brushes and a little cleaning cloth. I do have to say I like how much stuff comes with this as like a little kit um, and this looks like it's what it's supposed to go on is this hook so I'm assuming that if we just hooked this up we'll probably get some swaying still I think. So this top part here is actually an ant moat so you can put water in there so the ants can't cross and get into the smart hummingbird feeder. Um, it's not good for anyone if your ants get in there uh, because they're just going to drown in the feeder and the hummingbirds aren't going to appreciate that either. So I'm really excited to test these two products from Birdkiss and I'm gonna charge them up and then we'll get to mounting and we'll see how they perform. 
All right, I am getting ready to put up the smart hummingbird feeder, which I'm really excited about. Uh, that means we have to do some work on getting it connected to the phone so that we can actually see what's going on. And then that means we actually have to do some mechanical work and putting it together. So um, let's see if we can figure this out. Um, so here obviously is the, the piece that's gonna hold all the nectar and then also hold the camera. So we're just gonna satisfyingly peel off the stuff that was covering it. I charged the supple array so it should be good to go, um, but you're going to have to charge that camera up before you put it out there or else you're just not going to have much battery power. Um, let's see what we all have here. So we'll put this on last because that's going to be for the top and that's going to be where the moat is going to go. After putting the feeder together, I worked on getting it connected to my phone. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the app first. So we're going to get the... Uh, the Vico Home Security app, which is what's used for this particular smart hummingbird feeder, all of the different smart bird feeders, smart bird houses, hummingbird feeders are going to have usually a uh, app that goes along with them. It'll be a different one. So some have the Bird Lover. This one has the Vico Home Security app. Um, but it'll tell you on the box. You can just scan the QR code and it'll take you to it in the app store. And I think pretty much the entire time they're free uh, unless you get extra features with it. But the app itself, when I downloaded it, was free. Once I downloaded the Vico Home Security app, I began the process of connecting the new device. After a little bit of trouble getting the Wi-Fi to work properly, the device eventually connected. Connection succeeded. Oh, there we go. Connection succeeded. I've never gotten this far before. Initializing the device. We're going to put this back in here now. Try and get it through the flowers. There we go. With all of the preliminary work complete, all that was left to do was fill the feeder with nectar, see if it leaked, and then put it up in the yard. Okay, so we have our four to one water to sugar ratioed water here, and we're actually gonna fill this basically bottom up because otherwise it's gonna squirt out of the flowers. So I'm gonna try to pour this through here. So like I said, it's technically upside down now. about as much as we're gonna go there. Okay, so I think that should be good. So I'm gonna tip it, we're gonna do the tip test. And nothing squirted out, so that's a plus. Oh, we got some, some bubbling there. It looks like some sort of fun Christmas ornament. And we got a little bug that's already trying to join the party here. So it looks like that's gonna work. Here's the hook that we're gonna use to just attach this, super simple. And it's gonna hang. Now, one of the things about this, like I was saying, is that if it's windy, we're gonna get swaying. So there's a good chance we're gonna get notifications from that when there's no bird there because the motion detector is gonna do it. So we also have some water here that we're gonna put in the ant moat up top. So hopefully that will deter any ants or other insects from trying to come into the nectar. And we'll put this on a hook that's over there and uh, get set up and hopefully some hummingbirds arrive soon going to be a nice location. We have had some issues with uh, raccoons actually coming to try to take nectar from hummingbird feeders in the past so hopefully this one being up off the ground more is going to make that a non-factor and let's wait now and see if we get any hummingbirds to show up. After setting up the smart hummingbird feeder I turned my attention to the smart birdhouse. So I am now ready to put up this smart birdhouse which I'm really excited about to see if we get anything. We did have to do some adjustments to get it started, so it comes with the different uh, holes that are different sizes. You can go bigger or smaller. We went smaller to see if we can keep out the house sparrows and give wrens and chickadees a chance to get at it first. Um, also, we mounted part of this on the back already, so this is how it's gonna hook in and mount to the wood that we're gonna put it on. Um, also worth noting, we have a little window here for light, but I'm gonna attach this um, piece right here to the wood itself and then just basically hook this on and we'll see what we get. I used a drill to set up the back mount of the birdhouse. So that's how it sits. It is a very odd shape, but it is level. It looks good. So now what we're going to do is pair the camera with the phone so that we can get an actual look at this through our device. So it's the same app that we used before. It's the home security app that we have the hummingbird feeder on. 
and um, we'll get this paired up. I'm just gonna add a second device, which is cool because I can use the same app. Battery device. I heard the sound, next step. I'm hoping this works more smoothly than it did with the hummingbird feeder. I'm pretty sure that was user error. Oh, jackpot, here we go. All right, it's initializing the device. Connection succeeded. Very good. After adding the device, I placed the camera in the birdhouse and then put up the solar panel to make sure the battery stayed powered up. Everything's now hooked up. The solar panel we added on too, and it's not in light right now, and it's kind of dependent on the solar panel for the power, because otherwise you'd have to open up the box, take the camera out, charge up, and put it back in. That's not really a prudent thing to do if there's birds nesting in there. So hopefully that will get enough sun. It looks like there's a little bit on it right now, actually, so that may work out. But now it's a waiting game, and we're gonna see if everything continues to work smoothly, and also see if we get any birds checking out the nest box. So it's been a few weeks since both the Smart Hummingbird Feeder and the Smart Bird House have been up. First thing first, we got hummingbirds on the Smart Hummingbird Feeder, and then a few other birds actually too came in and checked it out. There was a chickadee that perched on it, there was a house finch, and I don't think they were trying to get nectar, but they did just come in and, and perch on it for a little, so that was funny. But the hummingbirds did come in and use it, got some videos of the hummingbirds making their quick appearances and then taking off. Um, the thing about it is that I got so much media of just random things because the feeder sways in the wind and then it takes a video. So there were some days I would have 300 or so videos to kind of search through. So one thing that I would try to do perhaps if I were trying to get more specific on the videos it was taking is find some way to fasten it a bit more so it's not swaying so much because any wind, anything that pushes that feeder from side to side activates the motion sensor. So that's something to keep in mind is that you could get a lot of videos unless you find a way to make it more attached to something so that it can't shake or move so easily. But it did work very well. It eventually did run out of battery power, so um, eventually just stopped showing videos and stopped working. Obviously, it's still a functioning hummingbird feeder, though, even when it's not actually showing you videos. And another thing to note is that after three days with the free version of the app and uh, the hummingbird feeder, it does delete your videos. So you can save them if you want them, but if something happened three or four days ago and you didn't get to it in time, then it's gonna be gone from your phone, you won't be able to see it. So that's something worth noting. You can get a plan to purchase where you can get more days that you can see everything that's gone on with your feeder, but I didn't choose to do that, I just went with the free version, and with that it did work well for what it's supposed to do. So now let's talk about the Smart Birdhouse. I actually think the Smart Birdhouse looks really cool. I like the look of it up I like the camera angle so I can see down into the birdhouse really well. So everything on that has been great so far. The um, solar panel is doing a really good job of charging the birdhouse, which I was kind of surprised at because I didn't know if we even got it in a place that had enough sunlight, but apparently we did and it's still at full charge, which is great. Now the bad news with it is simply that it's the middle of summer and we haven't gotten any birds to come check it out yet. So nothing has even peaked inside the house. I don't think that that's a problem with the birdhouse itself. I think it's just the time of the year that we're in now. And I'm hoping that at some point something will come in and take a look because I'd really love to see birds using that birdhouse and see what species we could get in it. Uh, but for what it's doing, it is working exactly 100% correct. And I bet if it was early springtime, we would get something in it right now. At some point, I may try to move it and see if there's another place I can go with it. Maybe we can get a second brood in the summer, or if nothing else, just put it up and hope for something next spring. But that product is pretty cool. I enjoyed working with it so far, and I'm excited to see what it does in the future, if it can get any birds that actually nest in it. So that's my review of the two products. I think they pretty much worked as they were supposed to work, so that was great. I didn't encounter any big time issues with them. Like I said, the only thing to note about the hummingbird feeder is that it does sway a lot, which activates the motion capture. And that's something that every smart hummingbird feeder that we've tested so far does have an issue with. So it's pretty much across the board for feeders that we've tested so far. And then the birdhouse worked 
great pretty much. I can't think of anything that was really wrong with it. The only thing maybe to mention is that it does come with multiple sizes to the holes and I'm not entirely sure that the smallest one would actually keep house sparrows out. We haven't gotten it tested yet. We haven't gotten any house sparrows but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to keep them out. So that's something that you may also want to note and might require some further testing. But overall I thought the two products were really cool. It's always exciting to test out new stuff. If you're interested in either of these products, you can find them with the link in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.